So this is instead of the weekly Parsha class. I know it's Monday night, but we usually do a weekly Parsha class on Tuesday nights at the at Sons of Israel in uh, in Manalapan. And uh, hopefully, instead of doing one class this week, I'll split it up, talk about different aspects of Passover. So we call this um, discussion Passover, God's plan, and connecting to the holiday, even in solitude. So I always find that sometimes we, for whatever life brings us, we're not always able to celebrate the holidays as we would like to. And um, I just apologize. I think there's a virus on my computer. I'm getting pop-ups, so I apologize if that interferes. Um, Sometimes we're not able to celebrate the holidays like we would want to. Ideally, we would all want to be with our families and friends and have a big Seder. But I find that even when we can't celebrate the holidays the way we want to, we can still have a meaningful Pesach and perhaps a more meaningful Passover in certain ways when we connect to the ideas of the holiday. Meaning, why did God make a holiday of Passover? What is the holiday of Passover all about? And when we know those ideas what Pesach, the meaning, uh, the meaning of Passover is, we are able to um, f- contemplate those ideas and we can really grow closer to God by growing specifically in those ideas. So what is Pesach all about? What is the meaning of Passover? So primarily I'll be drawing from the works of the Ramchal and Maimra Chachma. I can uh, give anyone uh, a link to the English version of that book if they're interested, but at the beginning. So, so let's start at the beginning, the beginning of humanity. And then once we understand the beginning of humanity in world history and what God's plan is for world history, we'll understand how Passover, how Pesach fits into that plan. And again, if you have a question, please feel free to text it. And if I don't respond now, I will, God willing, respond later. So a person is comprised of two parts, a body and a soul, a guf and a neshama. We are the only being in creation that has these two opposite things, so to say, in one being. Animals are pretty much all body. They have a lower level soul, but they don't have a holy soul which desires to cleave to Hashem, to cleave to God. Um, plants, they just uh, they just have bodies, but and uh, everything else in the world does not have a soul. There are angels. Angels just have a soul, but have no body. By soul, I mean they have they're totally a spiritual component. They're just totally spiritual, and they don't have a body. Human beings are the only species in creation that have a body and soul together, meaning we have a body which desires physical things, desires to eat, sleep, and have relations. And then we have a soul which desires to get close to God and desires for something beyond the physical world and something holier and more sublime. We are the only being that has that dichotomy. And when we make the blessing of Asher Yatzer, which I hope everyone's making now, the Asher Yatzer is the blessing we make after we go to the bathroom, the reason um, we should be making it now is because we thank God that our bodies are working fine, and uh, we should all be very thankful now that um, that our bodies are working well. So at the end of the blessing, we see umafli lasos, that what God made is a pella, it's a, it's a wonderment. What is the wonderment? The wonderment is a human being that has these two opposite things, the, the body which wants to get close to physical things, and the soul which wants to get close to God, and nevertheless they live in the same being, umafli lasos. And our goal as a person is to make the spiritual side of ourselves beat out the physical side. Now, when God created man, he created Adam and Eve, and he put them in the Garden of Eden. The Ramchal writes that their existence in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't the same existence that we have now. Meaning, what we call spiritual, that was what Adam and Eve called physical. If You wouldn't be able to see Adam and Eve because they didn't look how people look now. They were on a totally different plane of existence. And what we would call spiritual, right, you could say um, you can't necessarily see an angel in a spiritual form. You can't see somebody's soul. That's how Adam and Eve were before they sinned by eating from the fruit in the in the garden. Now, they were commanded, La'avdu al-Shamra, to not eat from the uh, Eitz Hadas, not eat from the tree of knowledge, and they failed that test. Now, before they committed that sin, evil existed outside of Adam and Eve, represented by the snake, the Nachash. After they sinned, it wasn't just that they were cast away in the garden, but they were also punished that they would, um, that their whole existence changed. They became what we call now physical. Then you could recognize Adam and Eve as physical beings as we are now, and also evil, which used to be inside, outside, excuse me, outside of people became a part of people. And that's why we have what's called the Yetzirah or Zuhama. There is a Tuma, there is an impurity which entered humanity at that point when Adam and Eve sinned that caused 
that causes people to do evil. What was originally outside of Adam and Eve, represented by the snake, when they ate from the tree of knowledge, became a part of a person. And the whole goal of creation since Adam and Eve sinned is to get back to the spiritual level of where Adam and Eve were before they sinned, to get back in the spiritual level. Now, what happened? After Adam and Eve, humanity sunk into idolatry. Now, we have a few exceptions, like Noah and his children, and until we get to Avraham. When we get to Avraham, Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, he was the only person who made it his mission to get close to God and to return humanity to the holy state they were and to atone for the sin of what Adam did, what Adam and Eve did. And it was Avraham and his children. Avraham was the only one in all of humanity that recognized God and made it his mission in life to go back to what Adam was before he sinned. Now, up until that point, all of humanity had the ability, had the option, had the free will that they could be the people that would go back to Hashem and bring humanity back to Adam before he sinned. However, it was only um, Avraham who merited to do that. It was only him who took that step, who, who went with it. And because of that, it was only Avraham and his children that would be elevated to a higher level than the rest of humanity. Now, the plan was, God wants all of humanity to get back to the point of holiness before Adam sinned, but it was it's going to come through a chosen people, meaning there's going to be a people that are supposed to represent to the world of how God wants a person to live of by following the Torah, and through that people, will the world will return to a holier state the way it was before Adam sinned. Now, again, everybody, every human being at that time in human history could have, you know, uh, taken the bull by the horns and been that people, but it was only Avraham. So since it was only Avraham, Avraham and his children are the ones who are the chosen people to bring back humanity to the way it was before Adam sinned. And spoiler alert, the chosen people is us, the Jewish people. Now, how is it going to work? So, how does human history work now? So now we have, uh, I'm skipping Pesach, I'm going to go back to Passover, how Passover all fits into this. But after the Jewish people were chosen, the Jewish people have to live the way they, the way they are supposed to live according to the Torah. And when the Jewish people do that, Mashiach is going to come. Now, Mashiach is supposed to come before the year 6,000. We are in the year 5, 7, 57880, eight, right? 5780. I always get confused. So we have a few hundred years off before Mashiach has to come. Now, after Mashiach comes, humanity is going to be returned. What, ha what is, happens when Mashiach comes? The whole world is going to recognize there's a God. Now, just by the way, one of the ways that it happens that the whole world recognizes is that there's a God is when humanity realizes that they have no power. Um, when humanity realizes that they have no power and that they're not in charge, then automatically they realize that there's a God in charge and that's, that's who we should be worshiping. Now, if uh, we look around nowadays, we could definitely see how humanity has kind of realized that we have no power and we can't really control anything. So we're kind of heading in that direction. But after Mashiach comes, the whole world is going to recognize that God is one. And that's what we say at the end of Elenu, Venemar, all right, 5780, thank you, someone pointed out what the year is, of Venemar, of... Uh, and that day, the entire world is going to realize that God is one and his name is one. And that happens after Mashiach comes. When the whole world, when Mashiach comes, the whole entire world, not just the Jewish people, will recognize that God is one. And after Mashiach comes, it's going to be Olam Haba, which is the next world. The next world means that this physical world we are in now will slowly transform into more spiritual existence. And those people who did what they were supposed to in this world will get a uh, reward by clinging to Hashem. They will be similar to Hashem in the sense that they will be more spiritual and they will cling to Hashem and that's the reward. And that's human history in general. Again, we have the Torah was given to the Jewish people so that the Jewish people could be a example for the world of how to live. And when that happens, Mashiach comes, the world recognizes that God is one, and after that, the world transforms into a more spiritual type of existence. Now, how does Pesach fit into all this? So, it's first of all, it's important to remember that Jewish holidays are not like secular holidays. Secular holidays are just remembrances of things that happened in the past. July 4th, we commemorate uh, the um, independence of the United States. 
on Thanksgiving, we commemorate the uh, Su'uda that the uh, Native Americans gave the uh, pilgrims before they massacred all the Native Americans years later. But every secular holiday is a remembrance of something that happened in the past. That's not with a Jewish holiday. On a Jewish holiday, in addition to remembering what happened, there's an infusion of spirituality which comes into the world every day on that year, and it's the same infusion of spirituality that happened at the original event. So we're about to celebrate Passover. So whatever spiritual energy came into the world, on pa the first Passover comes into the world again on every subsequent year on the 15th of Nisan. So what's a Passover all about? So as we mentioned, after Adam sinned, evil entered him. It was something called Zuama. It was a certain type of um, Toma, the Kabbalists talk about a certain type of impurity that uh, gets a person to sin, right? Uh, a person sins because he has a desire. So those desires, many of those desires to sin, come from a negative spiritual force. That's why it says, mitzvah goreris mitzvah, avera goreris avera. That a mitzvah causes a mitzvah, and a sin causes a sin. So Reb Chaim Velazhner explains, what does it mean a mitzvah causes a mitzvah? It means that when you do a mitzvah, you have a certain positive spiritual energy that God puts in you, which makes you want to do more mitzvahs, makes you want, want to do more commandments. And the same, things with, same thing with a sin. If a person does a sin, he has a certain negative spiritual energy that enters him that makes him want to do more sins. So there, there are spiritual forces that we're constantly doing battle to try to influence us to do mitzvahs or to do averos, to, to fulfill the commandments or to violate the commandments. Now, uh, what's important to remember also is that... Um, we always have free will, but these are four spiritual forces which which can influence us and make it harder or easier to fulfill um, God's word. And so now before the Exodus, before the Jewish people were freed from Egypt, they had the Zuhama, but the spiritual impurity was part of them, just like it was part of the rest of the world. Because after Adam sinned by eating from the Eitz Hadas, evil and this negative spiritual force entered man. Now when the Jewish people were slaves in Egypt, that served as an atonement so that it would remove that sp negative spiritual force from the Jewish people. So on Passover, that negative spiritual force was removed from the Jewish people so that they were able to elevate themselves and receive the light of Hashem. Now, at the Seder, there are several mitzvahs we do at the Seder. One of them is maror. We eat the bitter herb, or the bitter herb. Now, the reason we eat this is that we're recognizing that through that suffering that we had, the evil left us, and now we are ready, since the evil forces left us, we are ready to receive the light of Hashem. And when we actually eat the maror at the Seder itself, we are actually removing that negative spiritual energy from ourselves. Meaning when we're eating maror, we're not just remembering uh, the past slavery and servitude that was very bitter. That's definitely true. But as Rabbi Naaman points out from Baltimore, he writes that, from based on the Ramchal, that when we eat the mar, we're actually removing the negative spiritual energy which causes us to sin, just like it was removed from, from us at the first, um, the first Passover. What's another mitzvah that we do? So there is a mitzvah called Korban Pesach. The Jewish people, before they left Egypt, were commanded to take a sheep, which was the god of the Egyptians, and to slaughter it and eat it on the night of Passover. Now, since we don't have a temple, we don't do that anymore. We have a shank bone just to, as a remembrance of the uh, Passover sacrifice. So, and by the way, when we talk of, even though we can't actually fulfill the mitzvah of uh, eating the Passover sacrifice, when we, um, when we speak about it, it is like, Hashem views it, it's like we eat it. Anytime there's a topic that we can't fulfill, like sacrifices in the temple, when we learn about that topic, we are actually able, it is like God views it in a certain extent that we actually perform that mitzvah. So the Pesach, was done because the Jewish people needed a merit, uh, needed to do something, needed to do a mitzvah before they deserved to be redeemed. And what that did is the maro, the maro which we mentioned before, the bitter herbs cleanse the body, the Pesach offering cleansed the soul. And once the body and the soul were cleansed, it gave them the ability to come close to Hashem. Now what about matzah? We all know that matzah is one of the mitzvahs that we do during the Seder. So matzah is a spiritual food. It is very hard on the body, right? Bread is very easy to eat. It's digested very nicely. But matzah is a food which isn't, so, which isn't digested so well. And it's a very spiritual food, meaning it's not pleasing for the body. Now, in addition, be uh, matzah representing the fact that, right, that there wasn't enough time for it to bake when the Jews left Egypt. It is also this spiritual food that allows us to um, get in touch with this spiritual 
um, aspect of ourselves. And he says, the Ramchal, that when we eat matzah for the seven days of Pesach, that spirituality that we gain actually comes with us the entire year. Now, what are the four cups? We drink four cups of wine. So the four cups of wine are juxtaposed, are connected the four expressions of redemption that God said that he rescued the Jewish people. Now, why are there four um, why are there four expressions of redemption? Because the Ramchal writes, there are four levels of the Sitra Achra. The Sitra Achra, again, well, not again, I didn't mention it yet. The Sitra Achra is this evil force, the Yetzahara, this spiritual impurity that is part of a person. So when God took us out of Egypt, it wasn't just that he was physically taking us out, but he was spiritually taking us out. He was removing these negative spiritual forces which are imped an impediment to get close to Hashem. And there were four different levels of this negative spiritual force of the Sitra Achra that we are... Um, that were removed from us when we left Egypt. So the idea of Pesach in general, we see how each of the mitzvos of the Seder represent this, is that we were a lowly, in a lowly spiritual state. We had these negative spiritual forces that were part of us. They were a blockage from our ability to come close to God. So on Passover, God took us out and he removed those negative spiritual forces, which therefore allowed us to cleave to Hashem and to now fulfill our mission of being the chosen people and getting developing a relationship to God and fulfilling the commandments so that we could be a light unto the nations to be what a human being is supposed to is supposed to do. Now, we keep tying into how Passover is how the Jewish people is fulfilling the mission of creation, where we're a chosen people to be a light unto the nations that the entire world will eventually recognize that God is one. And when we, um, when we do that, we are preparing the world for the ultimate redemption, which is Mashiach comes. So the Ramchal describes how actually the second half of the Seder is all about Mashiach. Right? If you'll notice, he doesn't mention this part about Elijah, but if you'll notice, someone just made a comment about um, Elijah, the... Uh, Right, we open the door for Elijah. Elijah is the prophet who's going to announce when Mashiach's coming. The entire second half of the Seder has to do, if you if you read it inside, has to do with Mashiach coming. Because Pesach is the first step for the Jewish people and therefore humanity to achieve their purpose. And the Ramchal writes that every year on Pesach, it's like we take another we take an axe and we take another chop down, we take another chop of the tree. Each year Pesach adds another spiritual dimension that we're chopping the tree until it falls down and Mashiach comes, right? Again, Pesach is not just remembering the exodus that happened years ago, but rather when we fulfill the mitzvahs of Pesach and we celebrate Passover, we are actively bringing Mashiach one step close uh, to come. And that's really the entire idea of Passover. Also, we eat the afikomen, right? We eat the afikomen at the end of the Seder, and we're not supposed to eat anything after we eat the afikomen. And we just, because we want the taste of the matzah to stay with us. And so too, we want the taste of Passover. And the spiritual holiness we gain on Passover will also allow us to go through the entire uh, year on a higher spiritual level. Okay, I had a lot more to talk about. So I think what I'm going to do, God willing, is to maybe just continue, um, maybe different nights, talk about Passover before Passover comes different ideas of Pesach, but just to summarize what we spoke about um, this time, we were saying that the Jewish people is the vehicle that the entire world will recognize that Hashem is one. Pesach was the holiday where they got separate, where the Jewish people were separated as a holy nation by having certain spiritual impurities removed that became a part of all of humanity when Adam sinned. And every year when we celebrate Pesach, that's brings spiritual energy into the world that brings us one step closer to Mashiach coming. And, right, so just something to remember is that these ideas, when we contemplate them and when we learn about them, when we learn about Pesach, we have a phenomenal opportunity to grow in our spiritual lives closer to God. And even though that we can't necessarily be with our family and friends this year, the main idea of the holiday is to grow closer to God, right? It's it's the definitely the best way to do that. A great way to do that is to... Um, is to do that with family and friends. But if we can't do that, that doesn't mean that we lost the main idea of the holiday. The main idea of the holiday is to come close to Hashem, and we could still do that, right? Maybe we could even do it in some respects better that we're alone. We have more time to contemplate these ideas and to learn about the holiday. And again, the holiday is not just a remembrance of things that happened in the past, but the holiday 
There's an infusion of spiritual energy where it becomes easier to connect to God than it is the rest of the year. You know, what might, what might take a tremendous amount of effort during the rest of the year to come close to God can be achieved much more easy on Passover with this infusion of, infusion of spiritual energy. I see there's some questions here, so I'm going to end the video and try to answer those questions. And if you have uh, any, any questions about how to run a Seder by yourself, if anyone has to do that, unfortunately, please feel free to reach out and uh, have a great evening and stay healthy.